Hey guys, welcome back to Buzzsaw. Today, we're going to be making things disappear with movie magic. What's up guys, my name is Ben, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some really cool effects all on your own. Go ahead and take a look. Pretty neat, right? Let's get into it. First, let's talk about how to film this specific shot. You're going to need a tripod and a stable shot to begin with. That is pretty much all you need for the disappearing stool effect. For the banana, what I did is I had two extra actors stand off screen and on each side of my magician. When he throws the banana up, the first person catches the banana. They then throw it over him, out of frame, and to the other side. The next person throws it up in the air for the magician to catch. Now, I know you're going to say, well, Ben, why didn't you just do two bananas? And the reason for that is because if perhaps I was using a prop that I only had one of, this would be the way to do it. We did have two bananas, but what if we didn't? So, in case you only have one prop, boom, you're welcome. Time to edit. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and import your footage over here. Next, we're going to click on our footage and turn it into a composite shot. Now that we have a composite shot, what we want to do is find our clean plate. So we're going to scroll through the footage and find the spot right before the actor comes in, right about there. Take the slice tool and slice this, and then go back one frame and slice it again. Delete the very first clip that has the start of the video. Next, we want to take this really short clip we made and drag it underneath the longer clip. Grab the longer clip and drag it to the beginning of the video. Now, we want to come over here and grab the Rate Stretch tool. Select that and come to a really short clip we made, which is the clean plate, and drag it out both ends to match the first clip above. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll through our video and we're going to find the spot where the sheet starts to come up off the stool. Right about there. Now we're going to select the Freehand Mask tool right here, and we're going to zoom in and we're going to start masking this spot right here where the cloth is not covering the stool anymore. Make sure when you start making this mask that you have the top clip selected, not the bottom. So let's go back a few frames right before the cloth starts coming up, right about here, and we're going to make some points, and come down here and click this Invert Mask button. Next. You want to go forward one frame and you're just going to keep going and mask this hole out of the cloth until the cloth is completely off of the stool. Before you do any masking, make sure you come down to the mask settings in transform and turn on the path keyframes. We don't want to do all this work and then have it be for nothing. After you turn on the path keyframes, start going through and keyframing your mask to adjust. So once you have your mask completely keyframed, make sure you go back and scroll through and make sure that at the beginning of your mask, it doesn't stay in the frame like this. You want to make sure right before it comes up, you move that whole mask out of there. Now we're going to come in and clean up the mask. Open mask and shape, and we're going to up the roundness a little bit. And then we're going to up the feathering to about 15. It depends on your shot. So now once the cloth comes completely off of the stool, what we want to do is adjust this mask to cover up the rest of the screen because as we know, as I mentioned earlier, the actor is going to come in to catch the banana. So from right here, we're just going to move forward a little bit and then we're going to expand the mask. By having this extra space down here in between the keyframes, it'll make the mask move more slowly and look a lot more clean when it moves up. You also may want to, when you go up here to this bigger mask that covers up half of the frame, you might want to keyframe your feather and your roundness and boost those up as it goes up. 
That way it'll just make it blend with the scene better and look a lot more clean. If you wanted to add a little bit more realism to your shot, you can actually go in underneath the cloth as it's being lifted up and add a fake shadow underneath the cloth to just give it some more realism and make it look like it's actually there and that the stool is gone. But for the sake of time, I won't show you how to do that in this tutorial. Now we're going to show you how to make the bananas disappear and reappear. As you can see in the original shot up here, what we had the actor do is throw the bananas and someone comes in and catches them. But we do not want this person to come up and catch them because it is supposed to be magic and magic is, well, it's magic. So in our editor, let's scroll through and find the spot where we want the person who catches the banana not to come in. This mask originally from the stool, you can actually adjust it to just cover them up completely wherever they're at. But as you can see, when we scroll through, there's a little shadow that peeks out from behind the mask, which is the person coming up to grab the banana. And we don't want that. So I'm gonna make another ellipse mask, which is this tool right here. And you're gonna make another mask right here. This mask, you have to come down here and set it to subtract. You also want to go into this mask and shape and feather it. This mask additionally will need to be keyframed to move and not move out of frame. To do that, you come down to transform just like we did before, and you're going to use position keyframes. We're going to put one keyframe where we want this mask to appear, right here, and then we're going to move one frame back and move the position out of the frame. You can also do the same exact thing with opacity and that may be simpler, but I feel like position is easier. Now that we have the first actor covered up, as we can see right up in here, the banana is caught in the frame getting thrown back in and we do not want that. So we're gonna make another mask. This time I'm just gonna make a square mask and we're gonna come in here and cover all of that up. Come down to here and make it a subtract mask. Same thing, go into shape and we're gonna add a ton of feather in this mask just so it blends to the scene a lot more. Now you wanna scroll through and make sure that your actor's hand doesn't go into the mask. This same mask will wanna go through just like we did with the other ellipse mask and this time I'll show you how to do opacity. Now you're gonna go to the spot where the banana gets thrown in. This is where I want the mask to appear. So we're gonna do opacity 100%. Then we're gonna scroll back a few frames we're gonna drop the opacity to zero. This will make the mask invisible. So that way the mask will appear over time so it's a lot more smooth. So to cover up the banana going in and out of frame and to make it look a little bit more magical, what I did is I used a spell hit from Action VFX, which is free to download online. Now just drop that sucker in there and you just find the spot where the banana goes out of frame, maybe right about there. You just drag the sucker over you're gonna set the blend mode to screen so that the black background gets removed. And then when your spell hit appears, you're just gonna adjust it to wherever you think is a good spot. Now to make the magic effect uh, have a little bit more impact in the video, what I did in my original video is I added a little bit of color to make the magic look like it's interacting with the scene. So the way to do that is come up here to new layer and we're gonna add a grade layer. So what a grade layer is, is basically it's like a filter that anything underneath it is gonna be affected by. So for this grade layer, what we're gonna do is we are going to come to the effects tab and we're gonna add a curves effect. Take the curves effect and drag it onto the new grade layer that you just made. Now we're gonna wanna take this grade layer and put it underneath the spell hit so it's not affected by this grade. Come up to your control tab and open curves in your controls. Now we want to adjust the footage to look like it's being affected by the light of the magic. So we're going to brighten it up a little bit. I'll go to my green layer and add a little bit more green because that's the color of the effect. And now with this gray looking a little bit better, I'm actually going to come down here to saturation and lightness. And I'm going to add that to my gray layer as well. This saturation will just add a little bit more color to the shot. Open Master, Hue, Saturation, and Lightness, and we're gonna boost that saturation quite a bit. We can also come down to the green saturation and boost that more as well, just to give it a little more color. Now that we have that, we are going to put a mask on the new grade layer that we just made. So I liked to do an ellipse mask. So we just go ahead and make a circle mask. And we're gonna drag that onto where the spell hit happens. Now, right now that looks horrible. It just looks like a green circle. But what we can do is come down to shape. We're gonna feather it out quite a bit. 
So now that we have this glowing green light effect, uh, it actually lasts for the entire video and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna keyframe this to go in and out. Remember how we used opacity in the other mask? We're gonna use it in this one too. So go to where you just see the first little bits of your magic coming in and we're gonna go to opacity. We're gonna put it to zero. Now we'll go one frame forward and you're gonna boost it all the way to 100. And you're going to skip all the way until the last little bit of your magic has disappeared and put it back to zero. What this effect is going to do for you is it's going to add a little more light to your scene from your effect and just sell it a little bit more. Once you finish this effect, you just do the exact same thing on the other side. Once you're done, you should have something that looks a little like this. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that tutorial. If it helped you out, leave a comment below and let me know what I should do next. If you like these videos and you want to see more of them, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. If you subscribe, the type of videos you'll see is tutorials on how to pull off your own VFX shots all on your own. And I usually use programs like HitFilm and Audacity to do them for free, so you can follow along without spending a penny. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. You have a good day.